Many of us think that the current healthcare system must change. That is why in this video I want to share with you what is the humanization of healthcare centers and why its implementation is necessary. My name is Albert Severa and I am dedicated to making humanization plans for healthcare centers and I accompany them in all their transformation processes. Humanizing is personalizing care because behind every disease there is a human being who lives his or her experience in his or her own way. It means putting people at the center and not only the patient, but also those accompanying him or her and the healthcare personnel. Humanizing does not mean working in a specific area. It is a commitment that the entire organization must have and implies reviewing each and every one of the processes with the focus mainly on people. Humanizing is much more than being polite. It is minimizing this tendency to treat people as objects and start treating them as people and not so much as a disease or as a symptom. It is to treat people from their totality, from their physical, mental, emotional, cultural and spiritual part. And this means transforming relationships from a formal level to having close relationships with people. From all the international research I have done, I would like to share with you a series of examples of humanization that I believe will be very useful to you. There is growing scientific evidence that creating friendlier environments helps reduce anxiety and stress levels. Let's take the case of a dentist where a very high level of anxiety and nervousness is usually experienced. Look at how a hospital can change with a simple action like a sticker or a vinyl on the ceiling, which if you think about it, is the place where the level of anxiety is usually very high. It's where you look when you're lying on a stretcher. Or look at this study in London in a nursing home where just by projecting nature on the ceiling of a person who could not move from the bed, they lowered their anxiety levels and panic attacks. Rehabilitation gardens can be created outdoors or for example, using the rooftops of hospitals to create stimulation and relaxation gardens as well. Initiatives such as this one help to provide a better night's sleep thanks to noise minimization and adequate lighting. Also design spaces for companions to rest, either with a sofa bed in the room or even with collaborations with hotels in the surrounding area. In this respect, many advances have been made in children's hospitals. On the left, you can see a very ambitious project in Australia, where children could change the light in their own room. And on the right, with a simple graphic, you can see how a space can be totally transformed and made more child-friendly. Projects with cameras in newborns where parents can monitor through the cameras the evolution of their children. We must also take advantage of the benefits of virtual reality and pain treatment. And I love this example in a center in Brazil, how they use it to distract children, vaccinate them, and make it an enjoyable experience for them. There are also online medical appointments, thus avoiding the protocol in the visit with the doctor, or platforms that help to collect patients' opinions or applications that help you know how much time you have left for your next visit, thus reducing stress. This can also be complemented by many leisure activities that have been shown to improve well-being, such as music therapy and animal-assisted therapy. These are just a few examples and really the alternatives are endless, but this is where the billion dollar question comes in. Is humanization really a good or a luxury? Is it feasible for the client? Is it feasible for the healthcare system, given the budget constraints and economic problems they are currently facing? I think so. I think it is an investment with a high return. And fortunately, there are more and more studies that support this type of approach, from a reduction of stress and anxiety levels, shortening hospitalizations, reducing pain, increasing productivity, comfort and retention of healthcare personnel. And on the other hand, yes, I think it is easy to implement humanization in the healthcare system, but as long as we develop a humanization plan that is honest, sustainable, very action focused, and moves away from these theoretical plans that takes into account the complexities of the healthcare sector, but also that we take from other sectors some actions and developments that have been proven to work and we can apply them here. And that brings me to the end of this video because otherwise I could spend a long time talking here. What we have shown is that humanization has a very high and very powerful impact with respect to the operating model, not just as a dream, but with some actions you can have a very big impact on people. And these humanization plans that I'm explaining to you are applicable to any type of healthcare center from a hospital, a nursing home, a detoxification center, a children's hospital, etc. 
As I am a lover of phrases, I would like to end with a phrase from Freud. Thank you very much for your attention. Courage because we all deserve a decent healthcare where people are the center of it. Thank you.